Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at the Blade MCPX2. This is a new version of the uh, Blade MCPX. It has some upgrades. Pretty cool new things included in it. Uh, I've already taken everything out of the box. I got it out here to show you. So we're going to go through some of the upgrades, talk about it. Then we'll take it outside and get a little flight review of it. So uh, the new MCPX2, which I have right here, this is the original, it looks almost identical to the original. My original has some floppy blades because uh, ball link is broken, but no big deal. But um, as you can see, they look almost the same. The canopies are the same. The MCPX2 doesn't even say 2 on it anywhere. You know, they look identical as far as you can tell uh, from a first look. The MCPX2, however, does have some upgrades, one of which being a larger tail rotor. Maybe hard to see, but the tail rotor is a good few millimeters bigger. So that'll give a little bit more uh, authority and heading hold and help your uh, head hold better when you're doing like flips and stunts. Uh, the motor also has a different uh, mount. Uh, it's, it's a different mount. It should keep the uh, motor in there a little bit more secure. I'll show the difference up close here. It's hard to... As you can see, it has more plastic around it compared to the original. This is the original that I'm shaking. The MCXP, MCPX2 here, it's got like a more more of a surrounded and protected motor mount on the uh, tail motor there. It also has a few other upgrades. We have uh, swash plate ball link dampeners in there, which uh, in the original I don't see any, but uh, in the MCPX2, again. I don't really see them, but they're somewhere in there. <laughs> but it has swash plate ball link dampeners, which actually a couple extra are included in the box. Extra dampeners. Uh, they can also be grommets, actually, if that hold on the, uh, the canopy. You have a couple extra links. have the uh, set of the fast flight blades, which are the ones with the bullets on them. And then you have the advanced flight blades, which are the straight flat ones, which are the ones that come on the helicopter. So you get the uh, both sets, ones of each, one of each. Have a couple screwdrivers for doing uh, work on your helicopter. You also get a DVD back here, which uh, they have some tutorials and some information about how to set up your helicopter and stuff like that. Uh, it also has uh, two batteries that come with it, just like the original, but the batteries are 30C 200 milliamp. The original came with 25C 200 milliamp, so a little bit stronger battery. You get two of them. And uh, you get your charger, which uh, has your AC, charges off your AC plug. And uh, that's pretty much it. You need a transmitter, which you could use anything from a DX4E up, up to a DX8. Uh, I've read that online. You can actually get uh, the programming downloaded online straight to your DX8, so you don't even have to do like the initial programming. But I just set it up myself. It's very easy also to just go through the tutorial on the CD and set it up. So, uh, nice little helicopter. It looks very similar. I love the original. Let's take this one outside right, and see so how we are outside. Got my DX8 and the MCPX2. Uh, my DX8 was actually already set up for my MCPX, so I used the exact same settings. I just rebounded to the number two here. So everything's set up the same, so I'll be able to tell on how the difference in they fly. So, uh, gonna put it on the ground and uh, get a fly here. Maybe. circles in normal mode and then I'll flip up at idle, idle up mode and uh, do some flips. Right out of the box, it hovers very smooth. Very little input needed to keep it still, but I am giving it some input. Let's get a little bit of fast flight here. Definitely flies fast if you want it to. Let's bring it back. 
Now let's flip it in idle up mode. There we go. Now we're in idle up. I thought a car was coming. I looked away for a second. Alright, so let's try to flip it and see what happens. Oh, very smooth. Check out this inverted hover. First flight, made in flight here, guys. Check how smooth this is. Flip it back in a second here. Alright. Okay guys, what happened was I skimmed the ground while I was inverted and I almost got it back up. It started spinning. I almost got it back up, but then I crashed while in idle up mode. Helicopter looks okay. Let's take it back off and see how durable this is because this thing just crashed in idle up mode. Start off again in normal mode here. Oh my god. I am amazed flying just as it did right out of the box and I crashed in idle up mode there's no damage I know you guys couldn't see the crash on the camera but it was uh, right into the cement upside down and it's flying perfectly still I just thought I broke it on the first flight but no nope. Alright, flip it back into idle up. Let's do one more inverted. Uh, a little close for comfort there. <laughs> there we go, getting it in camera view. It was right by my head for a second. Now let me flip it back. Very nice little helicopter. So I'm probably almost out of battery. I'm going to just uh, land it here, and then we'll do a quick uh, flight review. I'll talk about it a little bit. But so far, this thing is fun. One more flip. Let me hit it up and idle up one more time here. Oh, I'm still in idle up, I think. Yep. That was cool. I don't think you could see it on the camera though. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay. All right, guys. I think I need to stop. That was my second crash in idle up. I need to be more careful. Only damage it looks like is just a little bit of skim skids on the. Uh, main rotors no big deal but let me take it off and just make sure I didn't hurt anything okay there's something to be said about the durability of this helicopter I know you guys couldn't see the crashes they were off screen I'm getting a little bit of tail shake here but actually I've gotten that since I pretty much brought it out of the box it's just a tiny bit I think it's caused from the wind hit an idle up here and I'm going to have to do one flip and make sure I didn't hurt anything that bad. I think I'm almost out of battery here too though. Alright, we're still good. And I'm going to land it. So, made in flight without breaking it, thank God. Normally I don't crash like that. Usually I'm more careful with uh, first flights. But I got a little too aggressive and I hit the ground twice. But great durability there. So... See you guys back inside, we'll go over it a little bit more. Alright guys, so that was an awesome flight, a lot of fun. I did have two crashes, and I want to talk about those a little bit. Um, both of times I did 
uh, flip over it inverted just and I just kind of lost it it wasn't much power and I got close to the ground hit the ground one time I got back up and it started spinning and I hit the ground again but it seemed like when I hit the ground and it was on the ground the power stopped I'm not sure uh, if that's some type of software they have in here, but it seemed like the power stopped because I was in idle up and it took me a second to turn off idle up and get my uh, kill switch hit. But I swear the throttle turned off before that. So there might be something in there telling it to turn off throttle if it crashes, which is cool if it does. Um, but durability, I crashed this thing about as hard as you can crash it. I mean, I didn't go straight into a wall. I went straight into the ground though, cement, and no damage at all. So really happy. It flew great. It seemed to handle a little bit of wind better than the original. It seemed to stay more in place. Uh, the AS3X did not take over the controls at all. I felt completely in control of it. It went exactly where I told it to go. And with the tiny bit of wind I had outside, I didn't even notice the wind. Uh, with the original, I would have felt the wind a little more. I think the AS3X software kind of helps combat that wind a little bit. Uh, now, if you're in extreme wind, of course, you're going to be pushed around. I'm just talking about a little bit of uh, you know, like a slow breeze we have here. I didn't even notice it, though. So really cool, really durable. And uh, the dampeners I was talking about earlier that I couldn't see on the swash plate ball links, I found them now. It's quite obvious. I, I just looked at the old one and the new one. On the old one, the ball links just get pushed into the uh, connection, the plastic connection. On the new one here, it might be hard to see. The ball links go into the connection, but there's like a little uh, rubberized piece behind them, and that holds them perfectly in place, so there's no play, there's no movement in them, so you get the most precise control. So that's what those are, uh, that I, I just didn't see them earlier, but that's what that is. So overall, I would give this helicopter five stars out of five. I mean, this thing is amazing, it flew great, as you saw it was doing 3D out there, I wasn't doing anything crazy, it was my maiden flight. I still crashed it, you know, it happens, not even doing anything crazy, but I still crashed it on the first flight because I'm not quite used to it, but it held up to it. Only damage is a little scuff, the blade's not broken at all, it's just a little bit of a scuff, it's still perfectly straight, there's nothing wrong with the blade, just a little scuff there, so I really thought, you know, if you crash a helicopter and idle up upside down two times that you're going to have to be repairing something. So. That's, that's cool. Really nice durability they worked into this thing. And I can't wait to fly it more. So if you guys are looking for a really nice uh, Micro 3D Heli, definitely check out this MCPX2. The original was great. This thing is now even better. It's exceptional. So see you guys later. Happy flying.